Hi guys, Ricky Pope here, and this week on the Christian Urge Unite podcast, I talk with Arva Soli, the game designer behind Gate Zero, a story-rich adventure video game with time travel, first century Israel, and the gospel, plus scripture and nerdy news, and we'll get to all of that right after this. Hey guys, this is Ashley Cox from Fangirling Over Jesus. At FOJ, we believe in hope and light in the darkness and that you are not alone. We seek to unite and celebrate the intersection of the gospel and our favorite fandoms, and we get to do this through our social media, our podcast devotional, and our cosplay and fashion. And you can find links to all of that through our website, www.fangirlingoverjesus.com, through our social media, at Fangirling Over Jesus, wherever you get your podcasts, and on Etsy. See you online. Thank you so much for joining me every week on the Christian Nerd and I podcast. Recently, we helped launch the Christian Nerd HQ podcast network. The network releases content every day. Christian Nerds Unite on Mondays, Tatooine Sons on Tuesdays, Fangirling Over Jesus on Wednesdays, The Reverend and the Reprobate on Thursday, and the Speaking Nerdy podcast every Friday. Make sure you go to ChristianNerdHQ.com to follow all the podcasts and check out the Christian Nerd HQ YouTube channel for exclusive content we're making together, like our recent live stream about the new Flash movie. Let's read some scripture. Let's read Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I love hearing this passage, especially verse 16. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. The verse makes some assumptions that believers will know the message of Christ, uh, the gospel, and that we will teach others. This past week, I helped coach believers in some hard areas. Uh, They're making disciples in locations that Simply saying you are a Christian may cause your family to disown you or have the community become violent toward you. These are brave men and women of God sharing the gospel even when it may bring them harm themselves. I pray that we will take a cue from these strong believers and know the gospel well and teach it to those around us no matter the cost. Now let's look at some nerdy news. After last week's lackluster box office results from DC's The Flash and Disney's Elemental, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse tops the box office again this weekend with $19 million domestically after being in theaters for four weekends already. Now with a total domestic gross of over $317 million and crossing the half billion mark worldwide, the Spider-Man animated film is a great success for Sony. The new Marvel Disney Plus series, Secret Invasion, released last week, and many artists are up in arms about the opening sequence, uh, that it was created using AI tools, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, 
In a prepared statement for the uh, Hollywood Reporter, Method Studios said, AI is just one tool among the array of tools our artists used. Uh, no artist jobs were replaced by incorporating these new tools. Instead, they complemented and assisted our creative teams. The use of AI in production is a controversial subject right now, with the possible use of AI being part of the dispute in the Writers Guild strike. Uh, expect to see more use of AI and more controversy as these new tools become more mainstream. Along with many release delays announced last week, Marvel has stated they will not be having a Hall H presentation at the San Diego Comic Con this year. Reports do say they will have a presence at the convention floor, uh, but with the writer's strike and the film delays, it looks like Marvel will not have any major announcements that they, that would give them a good reason to host a Hall H panel. Arva Soli is the game designer of Gate Zero, a new Bible-based video game that places the player in the first century Israel created in Unreal Engine 5. Players will experience stories from the gospel while completing quests. Uh, their Kickstarter funded in just 79 hours, and it's still open as of the release of this podcast. Um, it really does look amazing, and I'm super interested in what is going to come from this. Let's get right into our interview. Arva, it is so good to have you on the Christian Nerd Unite podcast today. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. I, I'm excited to find out more about what you're doing. Um, now, you're with uh, Bible X, and uh, you have been working on a project called Gate Zero. Uh, a video game. Can tell us a little bit about uh, what Bible X is and and what uh, Gate Zero really is all about. Gate Zero is all about uh, bringing Jesus to the next generation. Uh, basically, I, we want to make the Bible uh, reachable to people that uh, play games, basically, and it's mm -hmm. a lot of them. So uh, we kind of look at us, ourselves as. Uh, digital missionaries in a way uh, hmm. there's a huge uh, potential in in making the scripture and the events from the gospels uh, available in a format where you can interact with uh, with the characters you can dive into the the, the huge world of Israel back uh, 2000 years ago and you can like uh, use a lot of time to understand the context and, and everything so that's basically what it's all about. Very cool. And what got uh, what got you guys started on this idea that uh, a video game was the right way to share the stories from the Gospels? I mean, it started out in in 2020 when we were uh, creating. Uh, I mean, I've been I've been working with um, creating content for youth and uh, youth mm -hmm. groups for about yeah many years. And uh, in 2020 or uh, 2019, it started out. We we were making, we were preparing this uh, huge live event for uh, a youth club. They were gathering about 5,000 people to this huge mm. Easter camp that was going to be held in in 2020. But um, you know, it was uh, COVID that time, so uh, mm. this this story changed a little bit. But what we basically prepared was a interactive tour uh, made okay. in Unreal Engine. Uh, to be able to explore the temple and to have to have a Bible study uh, interacting with the temple and and uh, it, it was we, they were studying uh, the letters to the Hebrews so we were making a lot of animation films uh, telling the stories and mm. uh, exploring and explaining the the different uh, chapters of the letters to the Hebrew and it was going to be ended and uh, this huge climax on this camp was going to be inside of the temple to be able to see and understand all these different aspects of the temple. So um, then three weeks before that, uh, everything changed. It was canceled. Uh, <laughs> the flights was canceled. Every, everybody was going to travel uh, to gather oh. to this event. But um, it uh, it ended uh, it went in another direction. So then we had the available resources and also uh, model of the temple so we mm. were thinking what are we going to do with this um mm. and then the idea came uh, we have this this huge we, we we made the whole of jerusalem one-to-one -one in the model 
So wow, what about if we take this further into a video game? And um, we did some marketing research and tested out some prototypes, and we found out really quick that this was this was a huge potential. So um, then we uh, started concept development, and yeah, ended up where we are now a couple of years later. That's fantastic. And I, I've seen some of the visuals. It looks really stunning. Uh, it, it, it is an amazing work that you guys have done. Uh, how big is the scope? The the Now, you said it's it's one-to-one -one of Jerusalem. Uh, mm -hmm. How big is kind of the scope of the game? Like, what, uh, what does this look like uh, practically for somebody we who's going to play it? Yeah, we uh, we have uh, we, the goal is of course to make all uh, all the events from the Gospels, and then we have to make of course all of Jerusalem and the uh, the cities and the areas around it, and also we have to make Capernaum in north uh, of Israel and also mm. some other small cities to be able to cover all these uh, events. So our dream is to make uh, a semi-open or open world game where you can okay. explore and basically use a lot of time in this world to to like feel and breathe uh, in this um i mean it it's a it's a parallel world kind of uh, if you dive <laughs> into this uh, to understand the context and the 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 social situation and the political situation back then so we mm. we basically want the the player to be able to use a lot of time in there and to to take in the the sounds and and the sights of of this this huge world. And, and who who do you actually play? What is the part the role that the player plays in this game? You start out in in the future actually in uh, in year twenty seventy two as okay. a player character called Max. Uh, he and his cousin uh, Hector they uh, they have they have gotten a. Um, uh, a mission from their grandmother, their, a riddle <laughs> that they want to solve because their grandmother was a uh, was a God fearing woman, and uh, mm -hmm. they looked up to her. But they are struggling a lot themselves, so so they want to try to find out what what was the secret for their grandmother. So she gave them a riddle, um, and she told them, "You have to find my uh, find out about my uh, my pearl." Uh, she tells them. So then mm. they are uh, then are then they are using a Hector's time machine uh, to be able to travel back to these uh, events and uh, search for the the pearl. And uh, when they are searching for the pearl, they find out that hmm, this pearl is maybe not a physical thing; it's, it's something inside. And then they mm. are discovering all these um, all these aspects and solving solving uh, puzzles and uh, solving mysteries and and uh, going on this adventure back in time. Very nice. Now, is it very, you said it was more open world is kind of the concept. Um, but do you get into uh, like to, to, to see the stories happening? Uh, how does that all work with an open world kind of setting? Yeah, we are. I, I'm a bit careful with saying open world. That's why I also said semi open world because uh, <laughs> it it uh, totally depends on the budget. Um, <laughs> but we have, uh, as you know, we have a Kickstarter running right now, and mm -hmm. and one of the stretch goals for that uh, Kickstarter is is more more areas to explore and also more content in those areas to explore. Mm. Um, but um, we have uh, we we put a lot of effort into making making cutscenes and to to tell the stories basically. So um, hmm. our goal is to make uh, one hour of cutscenes per release. Uh, so okay. per I think I would say per forty of the events, one hour of cutscenes. Hmm. Okay. Now, and and what will the the cutscenes consist of? So, uh, for example, um, we had a, when we made the prototype for uh, I, I haven't told you about that, but uh, we made a prototype <laughs> last year uh, okay. where we where we tested out the core concept with this youth group uh, that I told you oh, okay. about. So they they were waiting. They they were supposed to use it as a interactive Bible study tool, but then two years later, they they actually got to test out the prototype of the game instead. So to that prototype uh, session, we made nine hours of gameplay with uh, mm. one hour of cutscene. And for example, one of the cutscenes there are when you come you come to Jerusalem in year twelve when Jesus is uh, just a kid uh, mm. to the to Easter, and they 
uh, Max then meets um, Joseph and Maria uh, searching for Jesus. And uh, when he, at the end of that uh, gameplay, he ends up inside of the temple where he sees uh, Jesus uh, teaching the scribes and the Pharisees. So that's that's one of the cutscenes. We are we have made a small little film about that situation. So oh wow, the, the reason we do that we want to like show the how it could be, how it could be laid out when Jesus was uh, sitting there. How you you get a you get a, a feel of who this little boy was and and actually he was a boy like me uh, when he was 12 years old. So uh, that's one example. That's fantastic. Now I've, I've talked with uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of artists, uh, mostly comic book artists Mm -hmm. that have done some Bible based comics. And uh, to kind of equate this to that, um, there was kind of two different views on doing Bible based comics. Mm -hmm. Um, Some people I talked to kind of, take a lot of liberty, but tell the story uh, as um, a, as uh, honestly as possible mm-hmm. with some liberties involved. Mm-hmm. Um, another gentleman that I talked to uh, does a Bible-based comic book that's absolutely word for word. He doesn't yeah. add anything to it. He doesn't subtract anything from it. Uh, the only liberties he takes is how he lays out the imagery mm-hmm. for the, the text. So where does this kind of fall into that category? Are we getting um, are we getting Bible text or are we getting something that is more of a we're going to kind of tell the story, but we're not going to necessarily quote the scripture literally? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, and one thing we have been working a lot with to find find our way. Um, mm. Basically, what we do is we want to be as true as possible to the Bible, uh, of mm. course. And uh, we we are really serious about that when it comes to 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 the um, the visual part, uh, but mm. also the the text part. So, I mean, the the actors are not, are not reading uh, King James version of the Bible, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we are trying to interpret as as it as close to as it was. For example, Jesus. We don't want to put words in in Jesus' mouth. Um, mm, okay. We w- we want to make him say only only and, uh, and nothing more and nothing different than what it's written, and and then we sometimes use the the um, how do you say it the the version mm-hmm. uh, which is um, most uh, like uh, in Nor- Norwegian we say. Um, uh, <laughs> So, something that doesn't sound written, Conver- but conversational. Some, yes, exactly. We we okay. use the we use the version that are that are more conver- most conversational. Okay. Uh, so well. uh, so that's that's how we approach that. We we are we are putting some situations in among the disciples, trying to like uh, explore that a little. But mm. uh, in general, we are really serious about uh, this, and we are, have a huge respect of like changing <laughs> changing up things. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you, you mentioned um, you mentioned that you play Max yep. um, a, as a character. Um, did I see something about um, about building a group of players or, yeah. or did I misread that? How, no, how does that didn't. work? How does that work when you're, you know, when initially the game is just you are playing Max? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. We we uh, we we think that uh, Christianity is fellowship, and mm. to, to, that's also Jesus' words. Uh, we want to make make young people able to play together and families to play together, yeah, children to play get together with their uh, parents to have a have a good time together, but also like be able to discuss thing, things together because mm. we think that having a game to as a um, as a starter for uh, conversations is a really good thing so uh, from the start we decided uh, that we want to explore this uh, uh, this feature we call we're now called co-play which okay. is uh, kind of a couch co-op uh, f- mechanic where you you one pc player play as max and then you join in on your phones to be able to ha- help help the player uh, oh, okay. in, in, uh, on different uh, you can like um, 
we have something called Hector's Archive, where you uh, gather information or do Bible research and then contribute to the player with your uh, knowledge and your wisdom. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And we, actually, the other day, we had a guy tested out our, de- our demo on his stream, and he played uh, a game, a mini game we made called Catch the Lambs together with his uh, viewers. So, so then there's a mini game where you play as Max. You are going to gather some lambs for a for a little friend in Jerusalem, and uh, then as a mobile player, you are disturbing the lambs so you <laughs> so Max can catch them and uh, get it into the, to the fence again. So um, yeah, that's that's uh, some examples of what the cold play part is, uh, and uh, that's also what we tested out with the the youth group. They were hmm. five thousand youth uh, divided oh, wow. into, I think, nine hundred groups. So oh they, wow! They they had a kind of a competition between those groups. So um, it it actually worked really well, and uh, we are now further developing that. Then uh, we are now further developing that together with the single player functionality. Very nice. Um, do you do you expect to? do any kind of multiplayer version in the future? Is that something that you've discussed or have you decided that's just not the direction you're going? I mean, for now, it's not that not the direction we're going, but uh, I mean, we, we, we always dream about that, but uh, I think it's, <laughs> it's far it, too far into the future because mm-hmm. uh, we, we are, I think we should try to make what we have already as good as possible and also make the, the couch co-op functionality as good as possible. Very cool. Now, when I'm, um, so you talked a little bit about, uh, you know, Gate Zero and how it all started. Um, now, so Bible X is the the company uh, that's behind this. Uh, have, have Bible, been... X, Bible X is actually the working title, the previous working oh, title. Oh, okay, used from the start. okay. Uh, but we are ah. we are uh, moving more uh, over to gate zero, but we are doing it slowly so people are f- following along basically. Okay, that that makes that makes more sense now. Yeah, in, yeah. in my brain, I, I was trying to gather uh, information before our call, and, mm-hmm. and uh, I was trying to figure out exactly what everything was. So yeah, yeah, that yeah, makes I, that makes so much more sense. Totally now, understand. So so Bible X versus yeah. gate zero. What does gate zero actually mean? Yeah, that's a good question. We have been working a lot with that uh, that title. Uh, we have um, when we started to to we we had we had to change the name because we want to make like a more a game title for this. Mm. So when we started out doing that, we 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 found out that um, what do you say? Um, trademarking a game name oh is yes not, it's not an easy thing uh, so i think we have been the name for a podcast is difficult as well exactly yes. yeah <laughs> so i think we have been exploring about 200 different names uh, <laughs> and uh, use a couple of months on this um, of course together with a lot of other stuff but um the mean the, the name means um hector's and max's gate back to the original back to zero back to basics oh, okay. basically so, so what we want to do is, I mean, Christianity have, have, have grown really, really into a lot of directions. And I think a lot of people are, are looking for unity uh, and also mm. looking for um, things to gather around in, in the world we living, live in. And, uh, and what we are trying to do, that's also what, we, what our vision from the start was, that we wanted to kind of jump over these 2,000 years of history uh, and go back to the source and hear the the words from Jesus mouth uh, directly mm-hmm. so so the names come the name comes from that uh, and it's actually also of course the name of Hector's time machine it's it's his <laughs> gates into into the old city and into in back to the origin basically makes sense now when we're looking at you know gameplay mm-hmm. um, you, you mentioned something earlier I think in passing, uh, you, s- something about a puzzle. Um, mm-hmm. What kind of gameplay mechanics are we going to see uh, the game side versus mm-hmm. the, you know, watching the cutscenes of what's happening? Of course. Yeah, we're, we're trying to knit it together. So it's like one thing. So it's not mm-hmm. like gameplay and then cutscene. Uh, okay. But we want to make it like uh, the same thing. Um, 
So we have three uh, we have three gameplay pillars, which is story, okay. exploration, and danger or stealth or whatever you can call it. But mm. basically, the the story part is that you are. It's all about story. It's all about uh, trying to to solve this mission from Grandma and then dive into the the events and the stories from the Bible. Uh, the second one, exploring, is about exploring this world of of ancient Jerusalem and exploring all the contextual things and 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 stuff like that. And the danger part is is uh, of course when you get friend with Jesus and his disciples you're also taking on kind of them their uh, their relationship <laughs> with the romans and their relationship with mm. the pharisees uh, so you have to avoid danger and uh, we have then made some stealth mechanics um so you have to like sneak into to restricted areas and stuff like that uh, the exploration part is we have we have some uh, we have uh, uh, g- gathering craft uh, mechanics uh, and um, mm. you have to like find um, ingredients you have to find uh, for example you have to when you see in a cutscene inside of the temple there's missing one of the showbreads uh, okay. in, in where the priests are doing their service so then you are going to find find uh, out how to gather or find another missing it's it's supposed to be 12 breads right so then you have to like gather the ingredients and then craft a new bread to be able to proceed in the gameplay. That's nice. that's one example. Uh, and for example, if you're actually if you're going to get into the temple itself, you have to be one of the Levi uh, priests. Uh, it was only the the, the the tribe of Levi that was mm-hmm. able to serve in the temple. So then you have to find a priest robe and try to like <laughs> talk to people and uh, and uh, do uh, solve some puzzles to be able to find that one. Nice. Now, um, I know you guys are, are based in Norway. Yeah. Uh, and uh, are you? Is this game going to be multilingual? Do you have plans? What What does that all look like for you guys going forward? Yeah, the game is already fully fully voiced in English uh, okay. and uh, translated with subtitle subtitles and interface into twelve languages. Oh so, wow! Uh, yeah, so we see uh, we see a re- huge importance in doing that because we want to be- bring it to as many people as possible. Uh, do you mind sharing what languages right now? Uh, I can't remember them from the top of my head, but I can <laughs> I can look into the <laughs> Kickstarter where they are listed. Uh, oh, they're listed there. Okay, just a minute. Well, I can check that out. <laughs> uh, let me scroll down. Here they are: English, French, Italian, German, Dutch, Norwegian, Russian, Simplified Chinese, Traditional Chinese, Turkish, Finnish, Hungarian, Polish, Romanian, Portuguese, Brazil, Spanish, Latin America. Okay. And and English voices. Uh, we of course we want to make the voices into Spanish and maybe others as well, but um, that's also mm. also have uh, a money question. Gotcha. Now, uh, you do have a Kickstarter going on right now. Yeah, we and, have. And uh, I know just before you and I got on this call, we actually double-checked it, and you guys are just about $7,000 away. Yeah. I have every expectation by the time this episode actually releases that mm-hmm. you will have reached your, your goal uh, yeah. <laughs> based on that information. Um, so if, if you reach your goal... Um, how far does that uh, put you into the process of finishing the game uh, versus, you know, what, where, what do you need to reach for this to be something much larger or much grander than, than what you already have planned right now? Yeah. So uh, according to the speed we are uh, going in right now, we are going to reach, reach the goal within hours. Uh, and that's uh, that's many days since when you are hearing that this podcast, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so um, we have a, a base goal of two hundred thousand euros. It's uh, about two hundred and fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Uh, and then we have we have the something called stretch goals on Kickstarter, which is uh, like additional goals we are we want to achieve, and uh, additional elements and and. Uh, functionalities and yeah and w- what are some of those uh, the first one after the base game is additional bible events it's uh, about 15 more events from the bible from the gospels in first release 
uh, about approximately three hours of gameplay. And then we want to add new locations. For example, uh, areas around Jordan River and mm. uh, Nazareth Village. And uh, after that, more qu quests and world events. And after that, two huge ones, which is Xbox port and PlayStation port. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. A so, lot so of people, a lot of our, uh, I think our core audience is more more of a casual gamer, kind of. So mm -hmm. there's a huge potential in that. And I think uh, a, a lot of people are actually on the fence because of that. Ah, interesting. Yeah, it is I, interesting. I, I was, and I hope, hope we can, uh, I hope we can move towards that as fast as possible. I, I was actually going to ask, is this a... Um, a PC exclusive game, or is do you have some other plans? Mm -hmm. um, is this is this more of an online kind of game gaming experience with a a, a base uh, install, or is this more of a when you install the game, everything's going to be local on your computer? It's the it's the last uh, option. Uh, okay. it's not online. It's uh, it's a local game experience. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah, I, that wasn't wasn't clear to me when I was uh, checking everything out. Okay, but, uh, okay. So, was there but, something specific that uh, told you otherwise? No, no, I just I wasn't sure. It just okay. wasn't clear to me either way. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> that that's not a critique. That was just no, no. It's, uh, I, I was I was just looking at things and I saw specs for computer and but I, yeah. I was like, is, is this a you know, I, I I come from a world of I played a lot of World of Warcraft. Okay. Which, yeah. although you have a lot installed on your computer, is still technically an online platform mm -hmm. that you have yeah. to have access outside of your computer for. So yeah. I wasn't sure where this one fell into that category. Oh, yeah, we have we have online storage or cloud based storage or, or uh, like uh, <laughs> like your state in the game and your position and stuff like that, but. That's not a, you can you can play it uh, offline as well. Very cool. What are the future plans for Gate Zero or for um, uh, you know for the the ministry that you guys are in? Is it to just continue to make Gate Zero larger, or do you have other projects that are kind of in the works or in thoughts for the future? What does that look like for for your organization? Yeah, that's a good question. We are we are planning to. I mean, our dream is to make all the stories from the gospel. Uh, so that's mm. about uh, 134 ev different events from mm. Jesus' life. Uh, so we we want to make a complete uh, from Jesus being born to his death available in the video game. Uh, so the first release is covering about one fourth of that. So we went, mm. we want to make uh, four releases and, addi and an additional uh, Christmas oh, okay. DLC. That's our dream. Um, mm. That's that's what we have in like mapped out on our screens today. Uh, of course, we have other dreams as well in the future, like making something around Paul and his uh, missionary, oh, okay. uh, his travelings around uh, Europe. And um, a lot of people ask about the Old Testament, and they want some more action. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know about that yet, but uh, you never know. Nice. Well, uh, with the uh, with where you guys are on your Kickstarter, mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like, I mean, you've only been your Kickstarter's only been going for four days, and you're probably going to uh, meet your goal before the end of today, U.S. time. Mm -hmm. um, definitely before the end of day tomorrow, Norwegian time. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, with this kind of, if this pace holds up, I, I can see you having the funds to do a, a lot of what you're, you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and right. How, how excited were you to get to bring this game to life finally? I mean, we uh, this week uh, I might seem cold, calm right now, but uh, this week have been a, a roller coaster because uh, <laughs> it's just so uh, it's just so intense when you are, when you launch the campaign and it we, we actually reached fifty percent the first night, 
So wow. that was that was incredible. And uh, then we went to bed and wake up next morning, and we saw an additional uh, high pace on the numbers. So uh, it's it's really really uh, it's really really tense, and it's really um, stressing, and it's also a huge huge uh, what do you say? Um, huge celebration for us to to be able to to achieve this um yeah and we we can't uh, i can't imagine what the future will bring if it if we keep up the pace we also want to we also are going to do another funding uh, other funding uh, activities as well so we yeah. are going to make this happen no matter what we just uh, what we experience <laughs> what we experience when we tell people about the game is that they they understand it right away what we are trying to do and they also almost everyone uh, i would say everyone they they say like this this is something we have been waiting for so it's all about getting this in front of as uh, enough people because mm. um there's a lot of people out there uh, but uh, it's it's expensive to do marketing so uh, mm. what we hope is that people they talk around about it and tell their friends and family and then then there's no limits for what we can do that's that's great well, I, I am super excited about what you guys are doing. It, it looks amazing. Uh, I, I really love the art style and the look that you've put into the game. Um, I, I think it's going to be a, a great tool and, and a great game <laughs> as well. Um, how can people keep up with... Uh, now, obviously, you have the Kickstarter, but how can people keep up with... Um, with you and with the, the the game as it progresses. Now, I know before the podcast started, uh, you mentioned something about the, the actual release is probably going to be sometime in 2024. Yep. Um, right. So how, how do people keep up with you guys until the game is finally ready to release? We have a Discord server, of course, if you are really okay. into that. Um, it's a lot of activity there. We are about 5,000 uh, on that server right now. We have um, all social channels, so you can follow us there. Um, yeah, and, and also wish lo wish list it on Steam, then you will get all the updates, basically. So mm. um, if you do that, you will be a part of something big. And, and we, are going to, we are going to make this game no matter what. And we want to bring Jesus to the next generation. That's our dream. We, we see a huge, huge need and huge potential in this mm -hmm. because gaming and interactive media is, is the, is the, it, it's, it's the most impactful medium ever. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, and it's also a bigger industry than music and films uh, combined. So there's just about time that uh, that someone do do this, and it's it's it, it's needed to be done. And um, yeah, we uh, yeah, it's <laughs> you have to cut you have to cut this a little bit, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a this is definitely an amazing step uh, beyond the. Um, uh, the old Nintendo Bible games mm -hmm. that existed in, in the nineties. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, uh, you know, using unreal engine to, to generate the, the, the world. And uh, I, every time I, I hop on your website and, and look at some of the graphics, I'm just, I'm blown away with what you guys are trying to do. Thank you very much. I hope also we can, we, we are also, I mean, we have, we put a lot of effort into also making the content great because we, 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 re we really want to make the younger generation and the players able to understand and to like mm. be able to, before they take decisions for their life, to be able to uh, understand what they are going away from or what they mm. are going into. So they can actually take, decision based on that and not decision based on that they don't understand things and church is boring and church is hard to understand <laughs> but we want we want to make them able to understand this fantastic message and what jesus actually came for so um if we can achieve that we have uh, i think we can be uh, be happy awesome as a game designer um you know this is something that you're excited about mm -hmm. How does it make you feel to be able to use 
those nerdy skills that you've developed over the years in, in a form of ministry. Yeah, that's uh, that's basically why why I make a, wake up every morning, and that's also why when it gets hard because it's really hard to to make games and to like survive <laughs> in this uh, this world. But it, that's why we just keep on pushing because it's so it's 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 our dream to do it and it's it's like what we want to do. So um, to be able to to do that and use our skills in this way, it's uh, I think it, I, it's a blessing to be able to do that basically. Awesome, yeah. My my audience knows that I am a big proponent of using your nerdy skills yeah. for the Lord in any way you possibly can. Yeah. So uh, it, it's always good to see somebody being able to do that kind of work. Yeah, and I I, I I'm I strongly believe that the the most powerful message out there should be emphasized and and distributed to the strongest and most impactful medium out there. It's uh, it's needed and it should be done. Awesome. Well, Arva, it has been great having you on the Christian Earth Tonight podcast today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. It was great getting to know Arva. I hope you will consider supporting the Kickstarter. There are still a few days left. Check out the links down in the show notes below and uh, to find out more about the game and how you can be a part. Well, that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, click, you know, just click all those buttons down there, whatever they are. That way you can keep up with us and you'll be informed anytime we put out new content. You can find all of our social links, links to our YouTube channel and to our online store at ChristianNerdsUnite.com. If you enjoy the show and want to help even more, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. We've changed all of our Patreon levels last year, and every level has great benefits and makes a huge difference in the ministry we're able to do. Supporters will get to hear exclusive stories of believers we're serving around the world through our ministry partners. To check it out or to partner with us, go to patreon.com slash christianergeunite or or christianerdunite.com and click support in the menu. And don't forget to check out christianerdhq.com for more great podcasts. Before you go, I want to leave you with this blessing from John 14, 27. These are the words of Jesus. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. We'll see you next week. Blessings. Hey.